Hello, I'm Roger Bisby from the Skill Builder channel. If you see my lips aren't quite moving in time with the audio, that's because we had some trouble with the audio. But I'm out in Belgium and I'm here because I'm doing a little bit of a snoop round looking at rising damp. And there are a lot of people who say, oh, rising damp's a myth. It doesn't exist. It's only the English that have it. Continentals don't use damp proof courses and all that nonsense. So I'm doing a bit of a tour around to see just who does have a problem with rising damp. And I came to this lovely building. This is a new build in Belgium and uh, it's actually flats, but I just wanted to have a look at the damp proof courses and see exactly what they do in Belgium because that's a very damp place. Anybody that's ever been here knows that in Flanders you've got clay and it constantly floods and it's just about the only thing it's good for is growing potatoes. So here are the damp proof courses in the brickwork and they've got all these wheat holes basically they just fold a bit of damp proof course up and they stick that in the wheat holes just to uh, drain the cavity and this is an insulated cavity wall and inside here they put a damp proof course up the back before they put the pump screed in and that just saves any problem with that seal when they go to put the bifolds on or whatever they're putting on there they've got this lovely damp proof course which is underneath and then lapped up the back so it can't possibly leak and I've said to people in the past do this when you're putting in bifolds and so on and they never do it and that's why they get flooding indoors so it's nice to see that the Belgians do it the way I like it so here we have indoors another reason why they don't get too much problem with damp and that's because the plumbing is done pipe in pipe that pipe is inside a colored sleeve but it means that what you can do is you can run your pipes from a manifold everything is individually switched off and if there's ever any problem with a leak or anything like that you can renew that pipe just by dragging a new bit through but more importantly you will see the leak appearing at the top of the conduit if you like so that way you just turn off the isolating valve and you can just do your repair but it means you haven't got water seeping under the floor and you're not knowing where it's coming from and mistaking it for rising damp and and vice versa sometimes people have rising damp and they mistake it for a leaking pipe and spend a lot of time and money trying to find the leak which uh, isn't there so there you go it's a nice little system i think to have i'm a big fan of pipe and pipe and i wish it would come to this country so here's another couple of pipes and these are actually the hot and cold pipes coming from the district heating system and i don't know whether that's a heat pump i didn't actually find out whether that's a heat pump but that's all insulated underground it comes into the individual buildings and I would guess everybody's metered on what they use basically when that, that heating's coming in. But with a well insulated house that's all running on low temperature, it probably wouldn't cost very much to heat this house at all. Obviously double glaze, draft proof, some kind of mechanical ventilation heat recovery system as well in there. But it's a nice looking building. The Belgians love a bit of brick, you know, Flemish brick. They just rake back the joints here and I reckon they're going to point the whole lot with a kind of light lime mortar type thing but the actual construction is not lime mortar it's sand and cement i may be wrong they may just leave it as a raked joint but it doesn't look like a very nice raked joint when you look at it close up so i was assuming they weren't you see all the other details the heritage windows the steel gutters and uh, nice looking oak doors as well so all in all i think a pretty nice looking building there's the weep vents coming out and there's the damp proof course that some people say the continentals never use and you can see that they've actually put a cavity tray in and a damp proof course so that they've got uh, two ways to stop the damp really they drain it from the cavity and they stop it coming up and here's another interesting thing just on that concrete work there they put another piece of damp proof course along there i don't know why that's there but it's um it's obviously to keep the groundwater out from the uh, underside of the building maybe it's a beam and block floor it's a nice stone seal that's actually reconstituted that's a uh, concrete but it looks pretty nice doesn't it all smooth shiny here's the detail around the windows they're going to put some backing rod in there and then go around and cork the lot but uh, you can see that the builder keeps away from that and here's a few more weep vents that's a cavity tray over the top of the openings the door and the window there's a nice cavity tray there and they'll obviously be putting some weep vents in at some time in the future 
Obviously, with all the scaffolding taken away, uh, if they're going to point it, that's a bit of a problem. So this is porotherm block. This is what they use an awful lot rather than an aircrete block like we do. They use these clay blocks, porotherm, if you've ever been to any of the continental countries, Spain, Italy, France... They use them extensively. They tried to get them to take off in Britain, but they never really sort of took hold. You can get them, but it's only really for the larger builds. But I quite like them because you just basically stick them together with a variation on tile adhesive. And there is a bison concrete floor above, so I reckon these are flats. I never got to look upstairs, but uh, the developers were quite happy for me to have a little snoop round to bring my camera in. And there you can see the bison floor sitting straight onto the porotherm block. So although that's a kind of lightweight clay block, you wouldn't think there's much in it. It'll break fairly easy. The load bearing, when you spread the weight out like that, is pretty good, actually. There's no problem at all with it. There you are, spread it out. That's what I was saying. <laughs> so you can see just up here how they've tied the window into the concrete lintel over the top. It's quite interesting. They just put some straps on the top of the window and brought those along. Very often you see these kind of windows only fixed at the sides and nobody bothers to fix the, the bit at the top. So here we've got spray plastering. They actually just spray straight onto the porotherm blocks and then just get their big speed skims out or variations on it just smooth the whole thing off there's very little troweling up that takes place most of it's done with the big speed skim and then they just run the spatula over it now this is the screed that they use and it's a kind of pump screed but it's a an insulated screed it's quite fibrous and that is the low temperature underfloor heating mm -hmm. 